So um, let's see, we get some slides up. Uh, I'm here to talk to you today, uh, not only about the future, but about things that you can do today. Technology that is available now, and hopefully at the end of the session, you'll be able to take some actionable insights to your restaurants, to your investments, that could make you more profitable. It's all about profit. So um, this is me 10 days ago. Um, I live in Stockholm. By raise of hands, how many have been in Stockholm? Good. I hope you were there on summer. They say it's the best day of the year. Um, so why is Stockholm relevant? It's relevant because Sweden is considered the second most innovative country in the world. A ton of unicorns, a ton of startup. It's a great environment to innovate. Um, and what we're doing when we innovate is understanding what's all the buzz about. What is all this thing? Ian had a great segue into this. Either we are in the technology business or we're not. I'm sure you're all familiar with this slide. And you can really see how a company like Domino's back in 2011 had an iPhone app. Brands are today talking seven years later about having an app. So really understanding how we as restaurateurs in this industry could benefit from technology and make our investments more profitable is what this is all about. Um, apart from many things, I run a company called Livid. We're one of the world's largest restaurant design companies. And uh, we work with many of the world's global brands over the years. We've been doing this for 20 years. And over the 20 years, we've designed over 13,000 restaurants. So I hope we should have learned a thing or two by now. But for these brands, we always came up with innovative ideas. And they always, the, the responsible was always, hey, Ben, that's a cool idea. Who's done it? I said, no one's done it. That's why it's called innovation. I'm not sure. I'd like someone else to try it. So um, most companies come for us for restaurant design. And really what the design is just the outcome of what is under the surface. Under the surface is all the operations, what makes a restaurant profitable, kitchen efficiency, et cetera, et cetera. We're a pretty unique animal. We do even from you know, equipment design, if needed, to operational needs. But really what I'm here to talk to you about is our technology division. Uh, when we got all these uh, responses from our clients and, hey, I want somebody to try it, before I implemented it in our restaurants, we said, okay, let's be one of the first design companies to put a million dollars on the table and create our own real life lab where we can go and test anything and everything we think is the future of restaurants. So we call it the Livid Lab. Um, we uh, did a brief and we said, okay, we want a fast cash flow operation and a recognizable food platform. We're not gonna innovate there. We're gonna use something that everyone understands. Um, we want throughput. We want a concept that can do a transaction every 30 seconds, and we want a capacity of 1,000 transactions per day. But we're going to take that, and we're going to put that in a fine dining environment. Marble, exclusive furniture, art. And then we hired three different Michelin star restaurant chefs to create the product. But the trick is, we not only wanted to combine the speed of the throughput, the good environment and the good food, we also wanted to be able to serve it at 10 bucks. The whole restaurant was built in Spain, modularly, put in containers, shipped to Sweden, because Sweden is damn expensive. So we wanted to prove that we could build a restaurant off-site, shipped it to another country, and fit it out in 17 days. Another challenge that we said is we're going to do, we're only going to hire staff with no previous restaurant experience. And we're going to have a two-day onboarding. So we only have students in the restaurant. But in order to do all this, we wanted to have a seamless guest experience and literally have an AI engine that run the operations and the guest experience. Looks like a letter to Santa Claus. Maybe it's because we're in Sweden. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, this restaurant has now been up and running in Stockholm for uh, 10 months now. 
And what I'm here today is to share everything we've learned, all the insights we had from this journey. What we found out is that when we look into an environment with high transactions, there's an unexpected reaction from guests. How is it possible? How, I can, how can I eat in this environment for this price, this quality of food? That's exactly what we wanted to trigger. And everything is based on technology. Uh, for those of you who are operators, uh, we have a 25% EBITDA on this thing. So it's not only an experiment, it's profitable. We measure everything. So when we built the restaurant, we built in Wi-Fi access point, Bluetooth, we have geofencing, we have heat mapping, we understand how guests move within the restaurant. We have RFID tags on products, we have light sensors, temper sensors, everything you can imagine within this space. Because measuring is everything. There's a lot of companies going out there with technology solutions, but if you're not able to measure the results of everything you do, you have nothing. You just have a theory. Uh, this is actually live. This is from last Friday. So we know sales patterns. We know the number of guests in real time by the hour. Uh, we know how many of our guests are first-time visitors. We know our capture rates, how many guests walk by the door, how many of them walk in, how many of those that have walked in have been before, when was it that were there last time. We know the dwell time they spend. We know what weather it was at that certain time, and this is just one of 10 graphics that we have like this. So we wanted to create a system where we could put all the inputs you can imagine, have a business intelligence platform based on AI to learn, and that's existing in the market. You have a lot of BI intelligence tools that can show you dashboards of things. We wanted to take it one step further. How could we automate things? All the things that our GMs and our staffs are doing within the restaurants, how can we make a machine do them so the GMs and the staff can focus on consumers and our guests? So we have 1.8 million transactions. We do research every day in the restaurants. We've done over 2,000 customer surveys to understand what triggers different emotions. So we're not only seeing the sales, but also understanding what drives customer emotion and customer engagement. So we wanted to do some actionable insights. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to walk through a few of them, and hopefully I can answer questions later. So one is behavior-based playlist. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Spotify? A lot of you, OK. Um, so Spotify is our partner in this venture. And we've been able to create behavior playlist. So depending on what music we're playing, we can either have guests stay longer and have more upsell of high margin products or leave earlier if we have them on peak times. This is a research we did with a, a small restaurant company. They have like 38,000 restaurants, Golden Arches. You might be familiar with them. Um, we played three different uh, experiments. So we did 25 restaurants with no music. That was the benchmark. Then we did no brand fit music. That's Spotify 1000. So no bad music, just music that people listen to. It's actually worse to have just regular music that doesn't have anything to do with your brand than having no music. Then we mix that with playlists that created that reflected music that reflected the brand values, and did a 50-50 split. And sales went up 1.2 points. If we then moved only to brand fit music, we were able to bring up sales 4.8. And especially on items that are high margin items. The second insight is dynamic volume control. So we measure actually how many phones are in the restaurant every 15 seconds. So when the lunch starts, and, and you all have systems that program music, you know, for, for lunch I want this volume, for dinner I want this volume because I want this ambience or not. Basically what we do now is that lunch starts with one guest in the restaurant, but it ends with 400 guests in the restaurant. You don't want to have the same volume because it's not the same experience. So we are now able to dynamically control music in real time and adapt that to how many guests we have in the store. We have artificial scent. 
Restaurants are a bit behind. There's other industries like hotels that are uh, further ahead in, in the scent. And we test different scents. And what was very interesting is that uh, we serve salads and pizzas. When we change from um, wood fire oven scent to fresh basil scents, our salad sales go up 13%. <laughs> so actually, we use fresh basil Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, where people don't want to eat pizza because you had a tough weekend, and then we change to premium scent on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we're able to drive customers' behaviors in sales through technology. We have real-time light scene control. So we understand, we have sensors that understand uh, what the daylight is outside of the restaurant to avoid the cavernous effect. So all of us have been to a light, shiny day, and you walk into a restaurant, it's dark. So depending on the light, we know that customers value lighter restaurants when it's bright outside and darker restaurants when it's cold. And in Sweden, it is cold. Uh, we have event-based marketing. So we have predictive engine that understands tomorrow, it's Friday, it's going to rain, it's five days since payday, there's a Justin Timberlake concert in town, we have two cruise ships that arrive on the harbor that are mostly Americans, and that predicts how many dobles we should do, how, many, how much beer we should have, but not only that, we can also have uh, automatic triggering on that. So we can have location-based marketing. We understand where our customers are, and we can have different marketing strategies to different areas of the city, depending on the different events we have in the engine. We do have seamless payment. You can walk into the restaurant. We know who you are. We welcome you. John, welcome back. You want your regular pizza. You can go to the, to the uh, point of sale to the cashier. You want me to charge it on your account? Yes, you don't even have to pull up your phone. Completely seamless. We have automated table management. So by heat mapping, we know how many parties of two, how many parties of four we have. So before every day part, our manager gets a uh, drawing on the, of the restaurant and can set up the restaurant for optimal throughput. This many two tops, this many four tops. So you ensure that you don't have parties of two on four top seats. We do have predictive staffing and scheduling. So with the predictive and engine motor, we know what type of staff you should have. You want to have ACs in their places on peak hour. You want flexible staff on non-peak hour. And that all happens automatically. We have even automatic inventory management. So we started with the beverage platform. The engine knows that it's a soccer game on Friday. Therefore, you're going to sell 200 beers, analyzes how many beers you have in stock, knows that you only get deliveries twice a week, and can send automatic orders to the supply chain without anyone in the restaurant needing to focus on that or count inventory. We have geofenced order, order management. So when you want to pick up a pizza, you order it online. Uh, and you say, I'm going to pick it up in 15 minutes or in 14 minutes. As you walk through the, do out the door of the, of the office, your boss calls you. You have to go into a call. You're running 10 minutes late. We know when you're three minutes away from the restaurant and it takes 2.5 minutes to produce the food. So we only trigger the order when you're walking into the restaurant. So you're, whenever you walk in, your food's going to be ready. You just, just pick it up and leave. But it's going to be smoking hot. It's never been there for more than 30 seconds. I stole this image from Aaron yesterday. Um, everyone's uh, seen this. We have actually m measured that on an average in a restaurant, it costs you $400 of time of someone looking at all these tablets, punching in the orders into the POS. And not only that, the amount of human errors you get in that transaction that you don't understand until the food reaches its destination. So we've integrated all the orders of the nine biggest global players now come automatically directly into the POS and directly into the KDS without anyone managing that. We also scrape all the data from Uber Eats and our all other uh, friends, so we know where our customers come from, so we can understand how we market to different parts of the city, but also in which areas of the city we should open the next restaurant, because we know where our customers are and when they order. At the same time, we make sure this is a great experience. So we do NPS. So you, I'm sure you're all familiar with NPS. Here you see a benchmark of the industry that's up there where we are currently. So it's not only technology, but it's going to be a really good experience. Ian was touching on this. Why AI? 
is because you have a set of input data and you have a set of output data. And I wish it was as simple that it was if then what. When you start doing this, it actually looks like this. So not until now we have the computing power to actually generate all these algorithms to trigger these events. So we use something called, you know what this is? Rosetta Stone, exactly. So the challenge we always have in the industry is, is not on my integration roadmap. Try to call micros and get something integrated. Good luck with that. Uh, so what we created is an engine that is, um, has a pull API and a push API. So we don't need the other vendors to integrate with us. We can just take the data and create all the uh, actionable items, which is crucial. Because otherwise, it would be completely impossible to do what we're doing. To me, the best of all is that this is completely invisible to the guest. There's no tablets, there's no screens, there's no hardware. This is just technology driving an improved guest experience and a better bottom line through um, seamless operations. Thank you.